Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Pat Farrell, Bob Polisky, Masters of Wine, finishing up a day of tasting. And it's been treacherous. And we've got two wines. One that I've brought to the table. We said we were going to do white wines. Mm hmm. White ish. And as my relatives in Scotland would say, this is looking awfully brune to me. <laughs> but it does have this amazing, glowing, yellow, greenish rim to it. So we're going to taste these two wines, and the wines should speak for themselves. My hint to you is that this one was a classic in a way. And that will be further be explained. I know what it is. What do you think, Bob? Fairly pale in color. It's got a slight uh, greenish yellowy tinge. Aromatics, uh, maybe moderate intensity. It feels just based on the nose, I would think this wine's going to be fairly tight. I would think it's it's very youthful. Not a lot of primary fruit. Maybe a bit of like green apple. Mm -hmm. uh, no real overt oak to this, or if there is any wood, it's it's minimal. I think it's got some wood, but compared to this style of wine, it's minimal for its style. I agree. Yeah, it's not like the lumber yard. Uh, some fairly tight acidity. I mean, it, it's crisp, it's bright, it's fresh, mm -hmm. it's pretty vibrant. Hmm. All right, a few thoughts on it. The, the finish on it is not extremely long. It's very well made. And it, it's one that's got some elegance, it's got a lot of class to it, which I, which I really like. Varietal, you know, if I'm playing the game of, of eliminating things that it's not. Actually, even before you do that, mm -hmm. I think it's got a, a lot of least contact. It's got creaminess on the palate, and it's got a little bit of uh, malolactic uh, fermentation, not the full mellow. I get some diacetyl, a hint of oak. So my thought on this, I'm putting this somewhere in the old world. I'm going to go to France. Mm -hmm. I'm going back and forth a little bit between, I'm thinking Rhone. It seems to have some of the Rhone-ish characters that I would, would typically identify with, but there's something about it though that like I said, it's got this, this little bit of a creaminess to it. Think of a place where they like to barrel for mint wine. I'll tell you, I think I'm, I'm, I'm still going to put this in Burgundy somewhere. It's a so I'll put it in Burgundy. It's so obviously it would be Chardonnay. So a riper style of Burgundy. Yeah, I mean, it's not as fat and lush as something like, when I think of something like Merceau, mm -hmm. it's got more weight, more complexity than something down in the Cote de Chalonnais, like a Mecon Village or Montigny, mm -hmm. so it's got a little more richness than that. I'm going to say maybe something like either, uh, like, uh, like Pluny Montrachet, mm -hmm. something along that lines. It does not scream Chardonnay to me at first, no, and, and, and especially the aromatics. Mm -hmm. On the palate, maybe a bit more. But there's a ripeness to the fruit. And I think this is young. I mean, this is a wine that's going to develop into something a lot more than what you're seeing right now today. So, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, like, uh, Pluny Montrachet. Not the highest quality level, but, but sound. So let's uh, say that there was a wine judging a number of years ago. And uh, French judges, as a matter of fact. And they would have fully agreed with your valuation of this wine's older sibling, except that they found it to be a bit higher quality. So the wine doesn't come from Burgundy, it comes from California. It's Chateau Montalena. Chateau Montalena, Chateau Montalena Chardonnay. You scallywag. My <laughs> scallywag? What a scallywag, what a scandal. So I'll tell you, this wine, I have not had this in a few years. It's a stunner. It's a stunner. Yeah. But in, in much more of a, like a, a restrained mm -hmm. manner. Elegant. Yeah. Elegant with some richness. So Chateau Antelena and the Judgment of Paris 1976. Mm. A Chateau Montalena Chardonnay, mm -hmm. just like this one here, was the favorite of the French judges. There were only French judges that were judging California Chardonnay versus uh, Burgundy, white, white Burgundy. And it, was, and it was a shock, and speaking of that, the movie Bottle Shock was based upon that judgment. Yep. And actually a very good friend of mine who had put that together, Stephen Spurrier, passed away just about a month, yeah, a month or so ago. Right. Who was a real gentleman. 
And so let's raise a glass to Stephen Spurrier Cheers. and to the folks at Chateau Montalino. Cheers. I veered off into the ditch a bit. Well, but it was easy to do. Yeah. You know, it's riper than most Burgundy, but there's an elegance there. Uh, most California Chardonnay has much more wood on it. I think most of the wood that's on this is is neutral wood and is a breath of fresh air, actually. Yeah, this is like a, a classic timeless style. It is. Beautiful. Beautiful wine. All right, you're yeah. up, my friend. I'm up. Batting in the second position and playing center field. So this wine's color is really fantastic. It's dark brown in the center, veering to amber, and then this like glowing yellow green color, mm -hmm. which uh, for me, based upon that color, has usually been a very high quality sweet Riesling from Germany. And so when I smell it, there's a raisin character. Yep. <laughs> there's a hint, even though it's not rancio, there's a hint of some slight oxidation that has occurred over a long period of time in the bottle. Mm. There's lots of mineral notes, and maybe there's a whiff of some citrus notes of citrus ghost of past years. Sweet, very acidic. I think the acidity is the key. The acidity, acidity is searing. Yeah, when you, when you have a wine like this with acidity, that's what's going to give it tremendous mileage. So I'd say from Germany, and I would say not okay. from Germany, but from the Mosul. Okay, and vintage, what are you thinking? This is old. You don't get this level of, unless it's from a riper year. I don't know, Bob, I'm at least into the 90s, if not the 80s on this one. So what we have is a, uh, it's a 76 actually. It's uh, something I've had socked away for, I hate to say, but decades. <laughs> but it, this is a, a 76 uh, Chateau Saint Jean. This is one of their- uh, Classic wines. Back in the day when Arrowwood was there and they were mm -hmm. making all of these incredible Rieslings. This is the individual bunch select 76. This is my last bottle. I had. I actually had 24 of these. Alcohol is only 10, 10.3 percent, okay. and it is like made to run a marathon again and again. I mean, it's just timeless. It's a Botrytis one. Though what's though what's fascinating about this, we each presented the other with a new world wine made to look like an old world wine with no planning. With it no just planning. happened that way. No planning, and we both. Went that direction and said, okay, odds are this is going to be the old world one. But yeah. but missing out on something that's so, so wonderful and had done such a wonderful job at achieving its goal of appearing like that old world classic, Yeah, I'm delighted by the wines. So the Riesling definitely had a big blast of botrytis. Yeah, huge. And that adds a whole level of aromatic complexity. It adds a textural element mm -hmm. as well. So all of that was, was really obvious. Uh, I will say pulling the cork out of this thing, I mean, it would thing came out in little little bits, even though the fill level was was perfect. I actually, and, I actually learned some new obscenities from you while you were pour, pulling that cork out, but. Uh, well, I mean, you think about it. I mean, this wine is, what's that, 40, 45 years old. Right. And it's amazing that you have a Riesling that, that's still around and, and holding together. I mean, it's, it's still quite interesting. Just a couple of drips, it'll match into the carpet. Down. That's fine, no worries. It's brune. Yes. Cheers. That was I'm going to tell you, we both threw each other a curveball, <laughs> didn't we? And, and we both swang. We swang and we missed, but we're happy to have come, we did. come close because these are two producers from the New World that we both really love. Uh, and look, back in the day, I mean, St. Jean has, has changed tremendously since then, but yeah. back in the day, I mean, they were like, it was like a cult following. I mean, that was like one of the hippest, coolest places you could go. I was a, I was a college junior back in 1976. Oh, I, I was practically as, maybe a zygote. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> you were some rancid, prepubescent <laughs> SOB running around creating, creating <laughs> havoc in the neighborhood. And nothing's changed. <laughs> Yeah, just, just the glow of the rim here, I got suckered in. I'm 
I'm actually surprised you even went to Riesling. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. So, so actually, there are times where you get the wine damn close, but they're slightly off, and you're still happy about it because the wines are such beautiful wines that are aimed at a classic style. That's true with both of these. We threw each other a curveball. Hey, we're, we're gonna drink well later and have some laughs. Patrick, on a Master of Wine exam, on blind tasting, how would, how would you guys have done? Yeah, so on the Chateau Antelena, right, a lot of it depends upon how you wrote, wrote it up, but Chardonnay, full marks. How it's made, full marks. Quality level, a few less than full marks, but, mm -hmm. but again, 65% mm -hmm. of the marks is passing, and those marks are tough to come by because blind tasting is very difficult. And in terms of place, people who know the Chateau Montalena and Chardonnay, that if you went to Burgundy, you wouldn't get full marks, you'd get partial marks for it, but it'd be enough. Bob's analysis would have been passing. What about yours? Maybe about the skin of my ass, but, but maybe. But that's yeah. okay. Okay. Uh, uh, things haven't changed since uh, <laughs> mm. 2002. Uh, you know, I'm joking, of course. And then mine, I think, may have fared a tad less well, but again, on the exam, one would not have gotten a 40-year-old bottle of California Riesling. Though that all said, yeah. Yeah. I would have been close enough to probably have passed the question, uh, but not aced the question. Yeah, look, the, the key is you, like, you identify the grape variety, and basically you do that through some deductive reasoning. Right. You call out the acidity, call out the sweetness, call out the, the botrytis piece. I mean, those are ticking all the right, right boxes. It's just at the end, you took a leap in the wrong direction. Yeah. So, I mean, all in all. Pretty good. Pretty good. We did all Pretty right. good. I hope you guys enjoyed the white wines as much as we did. Did you oh, enjoy yeah. the bomb? I did. And, and the company was actually even better. So please like, subscribe, give us a, some comments, and share with your friends. Thank you. Bye-bye.